Well, today is a fantastic day. Got the opportunity to get out on the new, all new Trek Fuel EX. Kind of the do it all trail bike. It's basically the perfect all around bike. Got the 140 millimeters of rear suspension, 150 in front. And I feel like these days that's kind of like a do it all rig or a kind of a standard trail bike. It's nice to have the rear suspension kind of kept in a manageable pedaling size, 140. You combine that with some good kinematics and some nice geometry. You have a bike that really can crush it. Uphill, downhill, everything. <laughs> I think the most noticeable thing about this bike is just how much steeper track went with the seat tube angle on this bike. Just brought it right into the modern spectrum. This large frame has a 77.4 seat tube angle in the low setting. So that shows you just how steep the effective C2 angles have gotten. And you can certainly feel it, especially this bike, as it's got a long 440 millimeter chain stay, or fairly long. You know, in this kind of category of bike, you see it all. You see super long bikes, super short bikes. This bike definitely leans on the longer wheelbase side of things. When I first started riding this bike, First saw it. Seems like Trek is really trying to make a statement that they are incredibly relevant. And uh, also a big theme of this bike is the adjustability. You got the standard minnow link in the rear that they've been doing for years. But on top of that, also have a progressivity kind of uh, not flip chip, but different bolts you can plug the rear shock into change the leverage curve, which is really impressive. Gives more options for running a coil or if you're got an insatiable appetite for pop like I do, go ahead and run it in the progressive setting. And enjoy the ramp up. Between the geometry and the kinematics of this bike, it really climbs super efficiently. Starting with the geometry, you got that over 77 degree C-tube angle, even in the low setting, which I'm running the bike in. It's my standard go-to. And beyond that, from what I can tell, it's got some really solid anti-squat kind of propping that rear end up. It's not been feeling like a bike that gets boggy and uh, sucks away your energy or loses its geometry on steep climbs. Feels good pedaling this bike out of the saddle, uphill, downhill. But yeah, it's hard to differentiate. I know that having that longer chain stay can really smooth out any changes to weight distribution where your hips are. And also just kind of throws your body weight forward between the two wheels in a way. All in to say that this bike is definitely in that category of new bike that can just go up a 15 to 20% climb if, it, if you really needed to. You can just stay firmly in the saddle and you're not fighting the bike to keep the front wheel down on the ground. Between the geometry, kinematics, and even these tires, this bike just manages to feel Pretty dang efficient. Doesn't feel like it's fighting you on the climbs. One thing I'll add about the kind of climbing experience is how stiff this frame feels. Feels very kind of supportive. <laughs> like it doesn't twist too much under pedaling forces. All right, time for the fun part. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, Rear end ramps up real nicely, swallows the big hits. I think I might have tagged the camera with the saddle on that one. 
yeah, this thing is just, you know, when you're in the 140, 150 millimeter travel category, like that can go, I think a couple different ways. You can end up with a bike that's fairly light and nimble, but not, you know, super capable with high speeds and big jumps and stuff. And this bike is definitely not that bike. It is so burly feeling and capable. It just loves to be tossed around and uh, to come through chunky sections real fast. And you don't seem to run out of travel on that rear end. Yeah, and I feel like somewhere in all that like long based capability, it uh, makes me kind of want to push the bike harder and in a sense makes the bike maybe more playful with all that extra stability. Because you feel like you can just, you've got a wide margin in which you could possibly screw things up. A lot of leeway to drive this bike hard, find myself shroping around that rear end Well, it's dry and uh, usually that's something I find myself doing more on kind of smaller chainstay bikes. Just, uh, this bike's got a nice stiff feeling frame construction that it's not really pinging your wrists or uncomfortable but it just makes you feel like you're on a solid piece of equipment. You can go pretty hard, drive it. Woo! Yeah, when you're riding this bike hard, it's kind of hard to believe that you're on that kind of mid-size travel bike with the 140 millimeter rear end with that extra wheelbase. You just feel like you got maybe a little bit more travel. God, this thing just pops really good too. Especially I've got the shock in the more progressive setting. So it ramps up real nicely. Phew! Yeah, it's just swallowing this trail up. It's super impressive. Like, I don't really feel like it's beating up my wrists as much as it should. Especially with these dry conditions I find tend to be a little bit harder on my body. That rear shock and linkage, the rear shock tuning, it just seems to be very active, quick to recover. Another really standout feature of this bike with this particular build is you got the Code RFC brakes, which I'm very used to, but HS2 rotors which have just been a big shock like how much of a difference they seem to make with slowing this bike down and heat management uh, riding this kind of terrain doesn't really feel like i'm overwhelming these brakes at all and uh this bike even has a 180 millimeter rear rotor so that is amazing you know this bike just really seems to be cut from the same cloth as the top fuel that we reviewed not that long ago. It's just really, despite not having a ton of travel, it just feel like it just plows through terrain. It just feels like the big brother to the top fuel, but not in like a cumbersome way. Wow, these corners are getting slidey. <laughs> Need some rain. Yeah, you just feel like you can uh, just really punch through roots and stuff, just kind of hang on. You don't get all that battered. I don't know if that has more to do with geometry or uh, the linkage curve, but uh, these bikes certainly do it. Such a great feeling. One of the most surprising things for me is just how playful this bike is despite having a longer wheelbase and I think 
maybe just having that smaller rear shock to push against can keep this bike feeling so lively. And I think also the really kind of stout, not too flexy frame construction just means you can slap that rear end around without feeling like you should be worried. I feel like you could ride really aggressive terrain on this bike and uh, not regret choosing it. Yeah, with the uh, slacked out geometry of this bike, it definitely has a very relaxed sort of presence, especially at speed. Doesn't at all, you know, this bike doesn't feel like twitchy at all. It feels so stable. Even when you're just kind of like tinking off of roots and rocks and whatever. It just seems to hold a nice straight line for you. It's such a fun combination. It's quite pumpy, super capable. It's an incredible all-arounder. I mean, what more could you possibly want from a trail bike? It's possible that this bike might be too long for some people, but I think the vast majority of mountain bikers would be super stoked with this thing. You just, just kind of let it dance on the nasty terrain. And it's uh, rewarding. So who is this bike for? I think this bike has such a wide spectrum of riders that would enjoy it. It's uh, so stable that it promotes a ton of confidence. So anybody who's more of a beginner rider is just really gonna thrive on a bike like this because it can kind of slow down the world, less twitchy, make things more manageable. And then in the same token, I think really experienced riders will like it because you just feel so liberated to just crush up this thing and just come into rough sections of trail too hot and let the geometry just do the heavy lifting for you and let it figure itself out. Yeah! Man, also just an incredible pop machine. So if you enjoyed this review, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. And for the full write-up, head on over to freehubmag.com.